Like I need to go through all of the emails and send each person their own, their own uh, email that is the thing that I'm trying to send out, right? Okay, how do I do that? Okay, so in the event settings here, this guy right here, this top part, I have to change what's going on over here. So, oh, excuse me, um, on the report, yeah, okay, so I have to fundamentally change the entire way that I'm doing this. So like right now, I'm triggering this on the report. What I really need to do is I need to change the system to where when I save the report form, where I've also added emails into that email list, now what I need to do is I need to flag each of those persons and then do an event for them. So like the way I would do this is we get back to here. We go to here. I'm probably gonna, this is probably gonna keep, yep. <laughs> here we go, all right, now we're back. Um, it's like a little loop around all the other cameras I have. It just kind of goes automatically. <laughs> but um, okay, so uh, like inside, let me go for my report, right? So in here, I've got this list of everybody that's included in, in the email. So what I would need to do is I would need to, in the user table, I don't have the field included, so I would have to add it. So I won't do it right now because it's sync time and all of this stuff, you know what I mean? But what I would need to do is I would need to add a column inside here. I do have an extra filter. Um, I would need to add an extra column inside here for an automation trigger. Yep, I'm just gonna take that over. Yep, all right, so now I've got this automation trigger. Cool, it's hidden and it's a text on the user table. So the idea that I need to do is that when I save this report form and I put some people inside here, right? I need to then mark all of those people. All right, well, instead of this being an email list, it would be much easier on the system if this was a list of the users instead. So it was the IDs of the people I need to mess with. So I'm gonna change that so like here on the table settings for the report email list right so if we go to this i still need it to be an enum list but i the base type not an email it needs to be a reference to the users and then i need to build a statement inside here to give me the list of all of the users so like i'm going to drop the users and the user id like so wait for it yes so now and you see it changed to that now. And if I save this, so it propagates. When it comes back, now we've got a list of all the people. And so now I can select this and the actual value that's stored back there is gonna be the IDs of the people that I need to do something with, right? So that makes it easier to do some of the other parts of what I need to do. If I didn't do that, I'd need to do some kind of like select statement where I'm saying, cool, look up all the user records, give me the IDs where the email equals the emails in the list. I don't wanna do that. Or where the email is in the list, right? I don't wanna do that. I'd rather just be like, cool, here's the list of stuff you gotta go with. Rock that. So now that I got this list of IDs of users, right? Okay, so then the idea is when I save this form, so this report form down here, when I save this, I need it to do something to all of the users that I just that I just selected. Okay, so first I need the thing that I want to happen, right? So I want to add a trigger word inside the user's automation trigger thing, because I'm gonna use that to then send an email for that user. So a new action on the users that sets, oh, it's probably not editable. Yep, that sets that field, sets the automation trigger to send email, all right? All right, now I'm gonna like shrink this and hide it because we don't need to see it. I'm gonna call it set user auto trig send email. Right, that's the idea. So now this is like a system action that I just needed for the system to use. So next, I now need the ref action that executes off of the report that says, okay, on the report, I have a list of users, for those list of users, do this action. So that is one of the, um, where is it? Execute an action on a set of rows. And so this, from the reports, 
on the users for my list of users, I need to run that action I just made to set the auto trigger. So this would be ref set user auto trig send email. All right, don't need to see it. Don't need to see it. The condition though, does need to be something. It, it needs to be if this, come on, come on, come on. I need my column list. Okay, whatever. There we go. <laughs> come on. Um, if um, the the user is inside that, oh, I guess that's, it's on the other side. Never mind. Um, yeah, we don't need to do that. Never mind. This one, sorry. I was getting a little confused with my context of where I was putting formulas and things. Um, no, this one is, I only need this to run if is not blank the email list. Yeah, so if I put some people in that list, I need this thing to kick off. And that thing needs to say, cool, for all of those people, go to the, here we go, go to the user table and set that person's automation trigger to send email, right? So now the idea is I go to the report, do my report, add in the people that I want to get the report, save the form. And then I need to kick off that ref action in that form save event. And then what happens then is that for all of the users that were selected, that automation trigger is put in that field on the user side. So now I need to make a corresponding action on the user, I'm sorry, a corresponding automation on the user side of things that says, okay, when you see send email in the automation trigger column, send an email. All right, so how do we do that? Uh, how do we do that? And specifically, how do we send the right one? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So easiest way. Um, let's find it. Easiest way. Okay. So this is the thing that does that. So if we go to automation, let's just start creating the stuff that we need. Okay. So I'm going to delete this guy so we can just start fresh. So this needs to be on the user table, right? So user autom um, let's call this send email to user, right? Okay. And the event is user in user triggered. <laughs> the user is triggered. Sorry, bro. Um, all right. Updates on the user table where the bear with me automation trigger equals send email that same trigger word that I threw the real thing that I should do is not type it in like I should come back here go to the action copy this you know what I mean like copy that and then go back to my automation and then go in here and then paste that there to make sure I get the perfect string because you wouldn't believe how many times I've pasted the wrong thing inside this little inside a string like that and then spent an hour or so or more hours trying to figure out why the thing wasn't working well it wasn't working because well when i typed it in i didn't put the space should have just copied it <laughs> so here we are now this is going to trigger off whenever i set that trigger word inside the trigger for the user now the thing i got to do is i need to send the report so first thing send report right so this is where i'm doing an email where the two is we go inside here so we're on the user table i need to send it to this user just like that you can modify this you can modify that we're really really worried about this attachment thing down here all the way down at the bottom right how can i get the report that i just triggered off into this even though that report has nothing to do with this user or any of the users. Like there's no actual connection to that. How do I make this work? This is where global variables come into play. You'll love this. So what it's an order of operations thing, right? So the idea is from the report, I'm going to trigger these, uh, this, these emails to go off, right? Okay. So what I can do then is I can work with the idea of when let me get back here here we go let me get to the report let me get to the report okay here we are i can work with the idea of like when i save this form right i can put a temporary variable 
on this form, on this uh, record itself. And then I can hold that record inside of a slice. And I can just hold it there for 30 seconds, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, you could probably come up with some way to indicate to the system that it's done marking all of the employees and then like expire it. But I'll just throw it on like, a, I think five minutes is the smallest timer that you can have in automation. So like, I'm just gonna set it to that, call it good, done. Um, but the idea, right, is that I, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, another way that I could do this is I could not use automation and just do it all through actions. I'm always trying to do things client side, you know what I mean? Like I'm always trying to get it straight to the user right away. Um, so like the, I have this, if we go back here on the user, I have this field where I say, send the email. Okay. Well, the thing that I could do is right, we're talking about an order of operations here. So when I save this user form, I have all of these people selected. Okay, and so then the idea would be first, mark this report as we need to process this. Second, mark all of the users. Third, unmark the report. And then mark and then send and then the marking of the the marking of the users happens at a state when the report is in that flagged status. So I can hold it in a global variable. So in order of operations, it's usually, usually the solution is more steps involved with what you're doing. So if I go here and I say, so, all right, let me get, let me get my mind right here on the report, on the reports. When I save this, all right, I have an automation trigger field. So I need another field in this table. So I am just gonna add this in really fast. On the report, I need another space. See, this is where having, I'm just gonna call it form type because people will recognize these as part of the helper trio. Like if I would have just had that as part of this, <laughs> as part of this, if I was just used, if I had just used the standard starting template, I would already have this space that I need and we could just move on. <laughs> Why you just use the template. Okay. On reports, give me the new column, right? So all that field, the only thing that I'm using that field for is it's just a space for me to hold something that I need. I'm going to use that to hold. This is the, this is the report, oh, I put it in the wrong table. Not here on the user table. Well, I guess I have two extra fields. My bad, trying to do five things at once. My bad, y'all. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna leave it there. On the user table, I'm gonna take this and move that here so I know that that's a thing I'm using and I'm gonna call this one a little out of order, but oh well, whatever, who cares? The idea, I just need that space so that I can hold a piece of data in that, make it visible and edit, make it editable. Okay, so the idea then is that I'm going to flag the report, flag the users, and inside the form type, I'm going to mark this is the report that you need to send. That way the user record itself contains two pieces of data when I'm going to send the email off. One, the trigger word that says, hey mate, you need to send an email. Probably, you could probably get rid of that by just dropping the, like the, the trigger inside, anyways, whatever. And then another one that's holding, this is the thing you need to send. I'm liking that better than trying to do just all in one. Like I'm never really a fan of like, oh, let's just do all in one quick, dirty, one and done. Like that's usually never the solution. Um, it'll probably work, but it's probably not the robust way of doing it. Having the two, that gives you that space where like I can hold one thing and then do something else too. Um, so back here, what do I wanna do? What I'm saying is go back to my action stacks. So on the report, it's this, Okay, first I need to tr I need to trigger this guy with a value. So, whole bunch of different ways you could do that. 
Uh, I just have one little thing. I'm just gonna do it with a push button. Quick and dirty, call it, call it good. Sorry, thanks for sticking with me for this stream for so long, y'all. Uh, let's see, so I'm setting the report automation trigger to um, mark users, all right? Okay, I'm gonna copy that value because now I'm gonna like create a subset of these reports that match this value. So do that really quick, go to slices for reports where the automation trigger equals what I have on my clipboard, mark users. So this is gonna hold that one report, mark users report. All right, this is the report that I need to send. And then I come back here. All right, so this marks the uh, report that I need to process it. So set auto trigger mark users. This is the report auto trigger mark users. Yep. So this is going to set the flag to mark the users, right? Okay. That, uh, I don't need to see that. Oh, hold on. I don't need to see this guy. That sets that. That will hold the users. So then the idea is I need on the report table a stack. So this would be save reports, right? And so the idea is this is one of those execute stack action. The first thing I need to do is like set the report auto trigger to mark users. That holds that into the slice. Then I need to ref set all of those to send the report. Then I need to clear the trigger. Or no, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I need to clear the trigger. Yep, I already have that one made. There we go. Now this, yeah, if I execute this stack in the save event for the report, if I go here, I go to the report form and I say, do my save stack when I do this. Every time I save this, it's gonna mark this as the people I need to process we'll throw a little intelligence on there then the uh only time that i wanted to do this is is not blank email list if i've got a list of people process it otherwise leave it alone don't do this so this is going to kick off when i save the you uh, when i save the report and it's going to mark it's going to mark this report hold it in that global variable and then mark all of the users. So I need to grab that global variable and drop it into the user when I set that workflow trigger to go off. So the automation trigger to go off. So that action I already have on the user table, it's this set automation trigger. So in here, I need to set that extra column that I put in there to, uh, let me grab the name of the slice to the slice that I made. Yeah, this guy. And I basically just need to index the ID out of that. So set this to index this. I don't remember what I called the report ID, report underscore ID. Makes sense, right? So grab the report ID out of that global variable that I just made. Which I haven't saved yet, that's why it doesn't validate. Set So I'm setting the automation trigger to the actual trigger that I need. And then I'm setting the index to the report that has the thing I'm supposed to be sending, right? This way, each user record now has the individual bits of data that it needs in order to execute what it needs to do. The last thing I got to do to make this work is set up that user email chain so that it does what it needs to do. Um, so if we go to automation now we go to this send users thing yep so when this is set to send email yep i need to send it to the user so we go all the way down here to the attachment right this is what we got to do we got to look up that attachment this row dot form type right look that up it's the report id so i need to look it up in reports You'll find this value in the ID. 
and I want the file. Whoop. That'll do it. That'll do it 100%. Do that. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to clear the triggers. You need to clear all of that temporary stuff that we put inside the user record to make sure that it's it's all clean and ready for the next person so like automation trigger needs to be put to blank and the form type needs to be put back to blank too that way it's ready to go and you could do that before you send the report and order of operations maybe doesn't matter at this point um at some things that you're doing the order of operations does matter but as long as you get the clearing of the triggers inside the chain at some point you're good to go